uh, it's definitely great to get practice underway, and I think our guys have prepared hard uh, all spring, all summer. Uh, pretty much everyone's here, ready to go, um, and I think it's important that we utilize uh, once again the, the next month to uh, get fully up to speed, uh, correct mistakes we made late in the season, try not to repeat them, uh, and get ready to have a great, uh, uh, great year. And without question, we think we got a really good schedule uh, that uh, is competitive but fun, and uh, we're looking forward to playing it. Jeff, you mentioned mistakes that you guys made later in the year, and I know you've kind of brought that up a couple times since the end of last season. What What do you think What were those mistakes? Well, it was a combination of a lot of things. Uh, from a coaching aspect, there are things we could have done better, uh, in my opinion. And, um, you know, in order to uh, be competitive against the best teams, which we faced some good teams late in the season, you, you've got to be sharp in every aspect. So. Uh, that in combination with some mistakes we want to correct on the field uh, are just simple things that I don't want to elaborate too much on, but there are things we all could have done better, including myself and our coaches, that we've got to make sure that we have the best plan uh, together to help our players uh, succeed at a high level. And uh, being a former player uh, myself, I'm aware of that, and it takes everybody doing their part, and we've got to be really sharp as coaches and uh, have a good plan, and if not, have answers quickly uh, when things come up. Jeff, uh, uh, is this team this year very similar to last year's team in the respect that you'll you'll throw the ball some, you'll try to run it a lot, and your defense looks like it's really good? Well, I do think that uh, we have the ability to be really good on defense. I, I like our personnel. Uh, I like our scheme. Um, I think we will have a good plan ready to go to help us uh, do some really good things, which is getting after the quarterback, stopping the run, challenging routes, getting sacks, getting interceptions, creating turnovers, all things we want to be really good at in order to be a top-notch defense. Um, and then on offense, you know, we, we were efficient uh, for a long time and uh, adjusted to what we thought could help us win. Uh, and then... Um, you know, we would just like to find a way to be a little more explosive if we can, especially in the passing game, to create some big plays and some quicker touchdowns where we don't have to drive it uh, eight to 12 plays down the field every time. And um, so that'll be important that we figure out a way to do that. And I just think special teams wise, we, we did some good things. We just can't give up big plays and have some costly mistakes that every once in a while we did, even though we created a couple of big plays as well. What are the advantages of having a number of older guys who've been through it? And then this is your second year. A lot of your players already know your system. They know how you coach. Is it any easier this year, or can you put things in faster? I, I do like the fact that we have some veterans on our team. I think it's important to have guys that have experience, that have played football, that have gone through the ups and downs. They've been able to handle adversity. They um, understand what it really takes to win at a high level. It, uh, in college football, uh, so I think we have that. And uh, if there are guys that are willing to learn and mature and go out with a bang, uh, we, we love having them on our team. And I, and I think we have quite a few of those. Um, even if they're newcomers, um, I still think they can do a really good job for us. But without question, the guys that are here for the second year, we've seen progress in them. Uh, there's a handful of them that are noticeably have shown signs they're going to make uh, really good strides uh, this year. Uh, so we hope that we're, what we're seeing carries over to the game because, I, I, yes, I do think people that have, have been here uh, their second year uh, could do a good job for us. Jeff, uh, obviously year two for you. Specifically, uh, just from the personal side, uh, last year very emotional being able to take over here at your alma mater and now getting that full cycle out of the way. Is, is there almost kind of a relief that you got that first year out of the way and now it's – kind of all gas on the br and no brakes here at this point. What, what does that look like for you? Well, to a certain degree, yes, uh, without question. But I do think that the stakes are higher now, and uh, we've raised the expectations of what we want to try to get accomplished. So it means you've got to continue to come through and, and prove yourself. So, you know, you can, you can look at it that way. Or for us, you know, we, every year it's a new year, and we try to take it one game at a time. And while that sounds boring, man, if you're trying to – 
do your best every single week, no matter what happened the week before. A lot of times it takes care of itself at the end of the year uh, without putting that uh, pressure constantly on yourself. So, um, you know, we want the expectations high. Uh, internally they are. Outside we really don't care, but internally they are. Uh, and we want to try to play at a high level and uh, figure out a way to play better than we did last year and, and uh, as many aspects as we can, and it needs to show up on the field uh, by our play and by the results. Jeff, you've added a lot to the defense, especially in the secondary, but one guy that was here last year but didn't get to play was M.J. Griffin. What's been your impression of how he's handled that injury and, and recovering and now coming back to play? Well, MJ is a talented young man who uh, unfortunately missed all of last year uh, with a knee injury. Uh, he is back healthy. He's done a great job rehabbing his knee, getting himself ready to go. He definitely studies the game. Uh, he understands what we're doing. He's into it. He wants to um, play extremely well this year and be a great leader. Uh, and if we can keep him healthy, I do think he will do that. He has shown really good signs in practice. Uh, he needs to... Uh, be the quarterback of the, the secondary back there and, and, and make sure we're lined up and ready to go at all times, no matter what we're seeing, and, and make plays. But uh, to this point, we definitely like what we've seen, and uh, we expect him to have a great year. You mentioned a handful of times this offseason how the various additions on the, off season, on the offensive side of the ball can help you better accomplish what you want to accomplish on that side of the ball. But what about the other side? Do you think the uh, – the additions at, on the defensive side, the additional depth, the additional year of experience, do you think, even though you guys were good on the defensive end last year, do you think you guys are more well equipped to you know, take it to the next step on the defensive side? Well, I think so. I think we added a lot of really key uh, talented pieces on defense, um, especially in the secondary, at the corner position, the safety position, uh, on the defensive line as well. We added a lot of key pieces that I think will play for us and produce, and they need to be productive. Uh, and we added a couple linebackers as well uh, that uh, one was here in the spring and showed us good signs and uh, another one got here after the spring that needs to show up and make plays for us. So uh, these additions we, we had on defense were to come in, almost all of them, and, and, and try to play now and get on the field now and help us. Uh, there might be one or two of them that are, that are a little bit younger that may take a, a tad bit longer, but uh, we like them all. And uh, to, to this point, you know, from what we've seen, we think they all can help us at what level remains to be determined, but we hope hope at a at a high level is what we're hoping. How, how do you decide uh, as you go into a season how much to actually hit and how much has it changed through the years from like when you played? Is, it, is there less live um, scrimmaging or hitting as the season in the preseason? Well, it's a delicate question and uh, you know, I don't know if there's a right answer. Without question, you want to get your team ready. You want to get them physically ready. You want to practice hard. You want to practice fast. You do have to hit some. You do have to tackle some. Uh, now, there are times to pull that back a little bit and, and make sure it doesn't happen. Uh, but unfortunately, some injuries are going to happen. You know, we lost Lance Robinson, or an O-lineman, uh, the first practice in a, in a helmet practice, and he's out for the year. So those things happen, whether uh, you're tackling live or not. Uh, and it's it's uh, something that you just do your best to try to teach guys to stay up off the ground, how to, how to practice as a professional, which is what you do at the next level. Uh, and no matter what tempo uh, or whether it's live tackle to the ground or not, you're you're smart and uh, you're working at your at your craft and your game, but also you're you're not taking any cheap shots. You're not throwing people to the ground. Uh, you're not hitting someone unnecessarily when you got a great opportunity to because they're on our team. So we just try to teach those small things. You hope that it adds up and we, we get to the first game as healthy as we can. But occasionally there, there's just going to be a few things happen, whether it is tackle or not. But without question, we, we do measure that. And um, I think we've done a pretty good job of it. But every year is new and different and, and, and crazy things can happen. How much practice have you done? Oh, quite a bit. Yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> Now, it didn't matter for me. I was a quarterback, and my jersey was a different color, uh, but quite a bit less. Um, you know, we'll have a couple scrimmage days. Uh, we'll, we'll, well, even on those days, it's not live tackle the entire scrimmage, but quite a bit it is. And then we'll have a couple uh, sessions uh, during the week where uh, a certain period or two will be live tackle. But as we get closer to the game, then that will that will minimize and, and shorten down. But uh, we, we will do that, and we'll, we'll practice. Um, tackling and uh, open field tackling sometimes where you're not taking them to the ground just to make sure we're 
we're staying up to speed, uh, how to leverage um, uh, a ball carrier with one person, two people, three people as well, but we're not taking them to the ground. So there's just some subtle things we do to um, help as much as we can minimize injuries. Jeff, I haven't seen anything on this. D what's the status of Mason Rieger going into this season? Well, Mason, unfortunately, um, had off-season knee surgery. Um, and, um, you know, some things didn't go exactly the way uh, he'd wanted, which caused it to um, push the return date back farther. So uh, right now he is rehabbing and uh, uh, will not uh, be able to practice during fall camp. We'll see what happens during the season. Um, but, uh, you know, whether we can get him back uh, or not during the season remains to be seen. Mean for that position? Well, we have known about this for a while. So, you know, we, we went out and signed um, uh, some guys at the defensive end position. Uh, uh, two guys for sure, veterans, uh, that have played a lot of football and, and Miles Jernigan and Richard Kinley. Um, we went out and signed a couple D tackles, uh, and Thor Griffin and Renee Conga and um, uh, Jordan Garrard. Um, so we, we tried to piece that up as much as we can. And, you know, we do try to err on over signing uh, number wise on the offense defense line to make sure we have enough guys. To me, that's where um, the great teams are really good, uh, so that they're able to win in the trenches. They're, they have depth. They're able to rotate guys in when someone goes down or gets nicked up a week or two or for the season. You're able to not miss a beat. So we, we think we have uh, addressed it as much as we possibly can to provide some depth in case some things happen. Jeff, uh, and this is probably – I know you have turnover every year, even though before uh, when you uh, – didn't have the portal and all, but you have an awful lot of uh, people coming in. You had some in January. How do you just get them all to mesh together, just working with them, film room, coaching, et cetera? That's the answer. So anyway, yes, we, we, have, uh, we have a lot of pieces. And, um, you know, we can, I can overthink it and say, you know, I'd, I'd love for our roster to be the same and that's not to happen, but it, it's, it's going to happen. Uh, that's the way that uh, – College football set these rules up where it, it's going to change. And sometimes when a new coach comes in, um, there there's probably might be more changes uh, than you would like. And you hope that eventually that decreases some. Um, but with the ability to transfer freely in, in two separate portals um, and with so many reasons why people are transferring, it doesn't all, it's not always related to playing time. Uh, it's related to other things. And so you can't really control that. Uh, you, you manage it as well as you can. So at the same time, it's about, hey, let's, let's develop the players we have and let's make it work and let's try to help them be the very best they can and play at a high level, get, get to the next level as well, graduate, get a degree, be happy. Uh, but at the same time, we want to build depth uh, with, with people. But if we need to continue to – bring experience to the table to help us win now, we're not going to be afraid to do that. So with the ability of all these guys moving in freely, um, we want to be prepared and ready to move as well. So I just think we study hard with our recruiting staff uh, and coaches um, when, the, when the off season hits and when these portal cycle hits that we're up to speed and we're able to move if we need to. It is way more so now than in the past, yes, just because, um, you know, uh, a lot of times you're recruiting, a lot of times you're just keeping your ears open uh, and people are giving you information on what could happen down the road. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but you would be shocked how much information is, is, is passed along of what could happen. So uh, we definitely take notes and we keep uh, – Keep keep those notes uh, by our side, and, and we're able to adjust accordingly. Jeff, when you look at Tyler Shuck, <coughs> excuse me, in high school he played against Brock Purdy. In college, he was behind Justin Herbert. Now, here with you guys, all past and present NFL quarterbacks. How do you feel like that kind of just shapes who he is, and how do you see him kind of being NFL ready right now, or where do you see his progress right now? Well, we really like Tyler Shuck. He's done everything we've asked to this point. Um, 
when we got him here, um, he still was a little nicked up. Uh, so we wanted to work hard to get him healthy, and he worked very hard to get healthy. So I think he's as healthy as he's ever been. Um, he definitely is a student of the game. He can throw the football. He's a, a big physical body that has athleticism as well, and he's played football. Uh, he's just unfortunately had some injuries, as I've kind of gone on before. If you watch video of him uh, in the past, he was asked to run the ball a lot, and he got hit a lot, and that will uh, increase your percentage of getting injured. Uh, not that it, that was the, the only reason, but it increased his percentage. So we, we're going to make sure that we – we do what we do, but also protect him to a certain degree. Obviously, he'll have to run it some. He's got to scramble some. We might have to occasionally call something for him to run it, but we do want to get the ball in our playmaker's hands as much as we can, uh, get the ball out of his hand as much as we can, uh, protect as much as we can to throw it up the field to help him because he can throw it vertically. But I, I like what we've seen, and uh, I think he will work extremely hard. He's been a great leader at this point, and we want him to, to, to play very well, and we think he has that capability. Follow up on the uh, transfer portal question. Given the n number of players who come in with credentials but maybe not familiar with your playbook, do you have to dumb it down a little bit so that everybody can understand what's going on? Well, at first, we will not try to dumb it down. We want to make sure that, uh, you know, we, we teach these guys and we spend time with them and we uh, develop their uh, ability to comprehend what we're doing uh, so that we have a decent sized package to use you know nowadays in college football a lot of times you, you a lot of people run the same stuff but man when you have a couple of new wrinkles here and there you'd be shocked how much it helps as we chart sometimes some new plays we run every week <laughs> they always work at the beginning and then as we use them more they stay they get stale uh, so you have to have a little bit of wrinkle on both sides of the ball uh, to do that and, you, and our kids have to comprehend it so we want to throw a lot at them so in the spring, summer, fall camp, we're going to throw a lot at them, and we hope that they can comprehend. As we get two weeks before the game, yes, that thing will be narrowed down. Uh, every week when we play in the game, it will be narrowed down more, and we will try to focus just on what we practice. But we will always keep a few things in the bank that in case we've got to get to it uh, in, in – uh, not dire straits, but when things aren't going well, we have the ability to do that, and they've seen it before, they've heard it before, and we can – uh, you know, just cover it quickly just in case we haven't covered as much as we like. So we, well, we, we want to have the ability to still um, coach and put plans together. But, yes, it is always dialed down as we get closer to the game and game week. Jeff, uh, w with the transfer portal and NIL and all that stuff, is there is there a sense of relief when you get to this point? Because, you, I mean, do you even do you think, like, this is this is who we have for this season when you finally start practice, or is that a couple weeks away even? And how different is that from what you've experienced in your other years as a coach? Yes, uh, you know, the transfer portal ends at May 1st. Um, now, you don't have all your players in by then, uh, so then it's a matter of getting those in and getting the roster set, which hopefully can happen by June 1st, but sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so yeah, after then, you, you pretty much kind of know uh, who you have and where you're at. Um, and things do stabilize mostly, not fully, but mostly. And, uh, and then you can go coach football. Uh, so, so yes, that, has, that part has um, calmed down a, a great degree. And uh, as we get closer to the season, regular season being over and the next portal cycle, then you have to prepare for some things that could happen. And sometimes you may have to be ahead of the game on certain issues uh, before you get to that as well. So we are aware of that, uh, not to get into too much detail, we're aware of that. And uh, we, we, we uh, try to be very uh, diligent but smart on, on how we handle those situations. Uh, Jeff, in helmet uh, communications available this year, does it change your approach to play calling? I obviously, we still do the hand signals for when you go no huddle, but does it change your approach as the play caller at all? Okay, so the uh, headsets, uh, earpieces in the helmet will we'll change things. And, uh, um, you know, the, the advantage of the earpiece is, A, the ability to talk to the quarterback, uh, but also to try to help prevent sign stealing. And uh, over the last two years as a, an offense, we have probably uh, – huddled a little bit more than we had in the past, and we've used wristbands a little bit more in the past to help prevent sign stealing. 
Uh, so this is another method to try to help do that. Now, figuring out the exact way to utilize that to be able to, to play at the pace you want, that's where it gets a little tricky uh, because uh, you've got to you know, figure out, are you, are you still going to use signal? Are you still going to uh, let the quarterback tell them uh, through uh, communication from the coach to the quarterback? Uh, and then how fast do you want to go and how do you do that? So those things... Uh, you know, if you, if you talk to a lot of no-huddle offenses that go fast, they were not in favor of the earpiece because they're probably still going to signal everything in. Um, but the NFL's used them ever since I played, which was a long time ago, so it, it should have been uh, put into place. And also, on defense, it gets a little tricky as well where you got to think things through. You want to have the ability to not have to signal everything in. Um, but after 15 seconds and it ends, if they change things and you want to change calls, now you're going to have to signal it in. So you still have to be able to signal in, um, and teams are still going to probably go quick at times, and you have to have the ability to, to either call it in quickly on the hair piece, earpiece or to get it signaled fast. So all those things are in play, but I do think it's, it's time it should have been put in, and you just got to figure out the best way to utilize it. Okay, thank you.